Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and I recently picked up an extra one of the Perry Brothers Gaunt's Ghosts models from all the way back in 2002. You'll notice that it's already painted, but it doesn't look like all of my other ghosts. And that's because I didn't paint it, I got it in this condition. And I can compare it directly to my previous model of the same sculpt as that one I did paint. You may also just be able to tell that both of these are damaged slightly. My old one has the bayonet snapped off uh, at the hip, and so I just added a bayonet to the rifle instead. And the new one has the Aquila scraped off of the rifle, which is just strange. So I could very easily paint strip this model and repaint it to properly match my Tanith army. It is a metal model, and Assassone will clean this off in about 20 seconds. But I think I quite like the paintwork that's already been done. The blue uniform is interesting, the red hair and tattoo are quite cool, and you know what? It will be an interesting exercise to add just a little bit of extra paint to lean it into my style without destroying the work that's already been done, in a way being respectful of the previous painter. The first and biggest part of this process would be adding some detail to the cloak. My Tanith models are quite distinct, with a fleckle camouflage pattern over some simple dark and light green highlights. The cloak is already painted with a dark green, somewhat more of a desaturated grey green than my usual more saturated blue green, but dark green is dark green perhaps, and I'll leave that in place to see if it's noticeable in the end. I do need to add my highlights of a lighter green, and as you can see me, I'm getting stuck into that already. Usually this would be a few layers with different mixes of the dark and light green, so that I have somewhat of a gradient in tone. But this time, I don't have the dark green that was used on this model, so what do I do instead? Well, there is a way to add highlight paint to an already dry base coat in a way that's thin enough to show some of the paint underneath, and that is glazing. And so I took my light green paint and I thinned it down with plenty of water and just a little bit of matte medium to keep it bound together and that's because just water by itself would cause the dilution to separate. And this went on as a pretty good glaze. Remember that glazing is a technique and not a product to be bought. I then added an extra layer of much less dilute paint and this was just at the main edges to bring out the lightest highlight where that should be. And I felt this was looking pretty good, certainly that dark green being a different type of paint to what I usually use is giving it a different look, but bringing in those highlights in the same way as I usually do is tying it in. And on top of all of that, all I have to do is add my usual fleckle camo pattern in exactly the same way I have done a hundred times already, which is a deliberate stippling of a variety of colours, black, grey, dark and light brown, usually an ochre or a sand for some fun. My aim for this pattern is to make small areas of each colour, and for the end pattern to be mostly covering the entire cloak, with very little blank green areas remaining. And you can see that this is coming along nicely. It doesn't perfectly match my original, it's overall darker in tone due to the different original dark green, but it certainly feels in keeping and matches in style, and that is what is important. So continuing on to some other parts of the model, I knew I had to just adjust the uniform a little bit, as the Tanith canonically wear black fatigues, the all holy lore coming in again, and this model is painted in a lovely dark blue. The ghosts, however, are also famous for not sticking to uniform code, and so I can leave that shirt in blue and just paint in the trousers. And I have a very simple style for the ghost uniform, so that won't take long at all. I have a fairly dark charcoal black as the base coat, and then still a fairly dark grey highlight, and over the top of that just a black wash to smooth it all out. And this gives me a suitable look with very little effort, and it will match the rest of the army as it's pretty much identical at this point. Almost as a side note, the scabbard, the belt and pouches got a dark brown, and this is pretty boring, but I do this to break up the colours of my original paint scheme so that it's not just solid black underneath the cloak. 
And there is just one other change that I will make to the model that isn't painting. My entire ghost army is based on mud. But this one has this beautiful green stuff runic floor. And I like it. I, I really do like it. But it doesn't match in the slightest. And I don't want to ruin it by just putting mud texture effect over the top. The only way I could really keep myself happy with this was to remove the model from the base. And what that means is I can reuse this base for another model in the future. And so that base isn't dead at all. But the ghost himself can go on a new base with the mud effect. Now, he does have a pin in his foot, and I never understood why people remove the ideal tab that's designed to attach a metal model to a base, and then replace it with a tiny pin that just isn't as secure instead. But this model has a pin, and I can at least glue that to make it hopefully secure enough. Along with the model, super glue is perfect also for holding down some sand and baking powder for my mud effect. Now I had to be careful priming the base, and so I masked up the whole model, and I know some of you love demasking, so I'll play that out even though I find it more annoying than satisfying. And as you can see, I got a little on the boots, that's fine, I can paint those up at some point. And the base itself just gets a dark brown with a light brown dry brush, and that's pretty much all there is to do. The skin, the hair, the shirt, and the last gun are totally untouched. The cloak still has its original paint as the base coat, and it's only the trousers and the webbing that I completely covered up. But even with that limited amount of work, I managed to keep the nicest parts of the original paintwork, which is what I wanted to keep, but also it does look pretty good with all of my other ghost models. You should be able to see here that the cloak is still darker than the average in my army, but if you compare my older cloaks to each other, they do vary in value quite a bit. And so this new one isn't an outlier, it's just the darkest point on the scale. And given how varied the tones of my armies are, with paints running out and being replaced, and my style and skill evolving and changing over two years of painting, the fact that this one isn't a perfect match is, if anything, a good thing. Reality is varied, and so when you make a model army, to make it seem more interesting and more believable and more realistic, it should also be varied. Strangely enough, the camo pattern is so different from my other Perry models, because these were some of the first that I painted, and I painted the camo pattern in a completely different way back then. And that is by far the bigger standout difference, far more than this new model being a little bit different in some of the paints. Well, let me know in the comments what you think of the match between this new model with just touching up the paintwork to fit in to my old stuff. Do you think I kept the heart of the original and the previous owner who painted this up? And do you think it fits in? But with all of that said, another model for my ghost's army complete I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.